Hello friends, this video on electricity and circuits part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. For different circuit elements. Okay, the next, this is, this circuit which you see here is an example of a circuit diagram where this represents a switch. This is the symbol for a switch. This is the symbol for a cell. This is these straight lines which you see. These are the symbols for wires. So that is how we draw a circuit diagram. Okay. So now the question is, we understood that if the circuit is complete, then the bulb will glow. So the question, the next question that comes to our mind is, why does the bulb glow? I mean, who allows the bulb to glow? So is it that if, if the only requirement that is uh, here is that the circuit has to be complete? Many a times we see that the circuit is complete but still the bulb is not glowing because there are other factors involved as well. So let us look at this scenario. Now here the bulb glows because current is allowed to flow through the wire of the circuit. So if you see the electrons are actually moving over these wires. So these wires are actually allowing the electrons to move. These wires are allowing current to flow through it and that is why the current is flowing. So even if the circuit is complete but if these wires they do not allow current to move through it in that case also current will not flow through the circuit and then the bulb will not glow. So here again let us take the same example of the bridge which will help you to understand it better. So in this case let us say that the bridge is intact. So nobody has broken the bridge. So the bridge is there, the path is there. But let us say that the surface of the bridge is very slippery. It is like spilled with oil and water which makes the surface very slippery because of which this person is not able to ride his bicycle over it and that's how he is not able to reach B. He is not able to cross the bridge. So in this case the path is there, the path is complete but the material of the path is such that it is not allowing the cyclist to move. So that means it is not necessary that all materials will allow current to flow through them. So there are certain materials which allow current to pass through them whereas there are certain materials which do not allow current to pass through them. So only if the circuit contains materials which allow current to pass through them only then the bulb will glow because in that case only the current will actually flow through the circuit and that's how the bulb will glow. So this is another important requirement. Now based on whether materials allow current to pass through them or not, the, all materials are classified into three categories, conductors, semiconductors and insulators. So conductors and insulators are the two extremes. Conductors, they allow current to pass through them. So they have very high conductivity. Conductivity is the ability to conduct electricity. It is the ability to allow electricity or electric current to pass through them. So they have very high conductivity. Whereas insulators, they do not allow. So they have very low conductivity. So they do not allow current to pass through them. So these insulators are also known as poor conductors. And many a times the conductors are also called as good conductors. So some examples of good conductors are metals, water, these are good conductors whereas plastic, wood, glass, these are all examples of insulators. So if you take a, a material made up of plastic and even if you put it in direct contact with a live wire carrying current, you will not get electric shock because the plastic will not allow electricity to pass through it and therefore you will not experience any electric current. But in case you hold a piece of metal in your hand and then you uh, put it in contact with the live wire carrying current, in that case you will get electric shock because the metal will allow electric current to pass through it. Then what are semiconductors? Semiconductors, the name itself defines it. It is like intermediate between conductors and insulators. So 
they have intermediate conductivity it is not that they are very good conductors at the same time it is not that they do not allow current to pass through them at all so they have like intermediate conductivity partially they allow current to pass through them so some examples of semiconductors are silicon germanium gallium arsenide etc so here in this lesson we will be focusing more on conductors and insulators so semiconductors are something which you will learn in your higher classes in 12th so because right now this is the basics so where you are just learning what is electric current what happens when current flows so you will only focus on the basics so let's see how adding materials to the circuit can affect the current flow within the circuit now let's say we add a new substance to the circuit which is made up of a new material so how do now you may ask that how do i know that if a substance is a good conductor or a poor conductor because if the substance is a poor conductor it will not allow electric current to pass through the circuit so let us look at this scenario so what we do is we take we make a small circuit where we take a bulb we connect it to a battery so this cell is nothing but a battery which has a positive and a negative terminal so we connect it to the battery and then we also connect it to the material so let's say the material in this case is something which is made up of a metal okay so when we connect it with the metal what happens and when we make the circuit complete by switching it on we see that the bulb glows now if the bulb glows what does that mean that means that current flows through the circuit so if current is flowing through the circuit what does it mean this particular material which has been added to the circuit is a good conductor that is why current is able to flow through the circuit because had it been a poor conductor it would have not allowed current to flow through it so in that case the circuit would have been broken and therefore the bulb would have not glowed similarly let's say you put a plastic bottle within the circuit now in this case what happens even when you switch it on the bulb doesn't glow which shows that current doesn't flow through the circuit so current doesn't flow and why the current doesn't flow because plastic is a poor conductor of electricity so it doesn't allow current to pass through it and therefore the circuit is not complete so any time we for any circuit to be complete now why i am always taking this example of bulb because it helps you to understand the concept easily so whenever you have any circuit so the first criteria is that the circuit has to be complete the second criteria is that all the materials involved in the circuit whether it is the wires or it is any other substance which is present in the circuit they all should be good conductors of electricity only then current will be able to flow through the circuit so that is the second requirement so the bulb glows only when conducting materials are present in the circuit so this is again very very important so whichever points are important i am focusing them because those are the criteria which need to be satisfied for a bulb to glow in a circuit or in other words for electric current through flow to flow through a circuit thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again